In this, the third lesson in C++, we're going to actually get into some C++. This will be your introduction to a very basic program in the high-level language, C++. In most of your programs, you're going to use the same constructs over and over again. you got to get used to these very basic building blocks. That's what this lesson is going to be all about. And I'm going to give you a baseline description of what each of these pieces do, and you'll learn more about them as time goes on. So let's get started. Here it is. Now the first thing I want to point out is the numbering over on the right-hand column, all of this stuff here, is not usually in a program. I put it here just simply so I could refer to the different lines. So ignore that stuff as we go through. You will not have line numbers. So the first thing I want to draw attention to is the lines of text at the top that begin with the two slanty lines here. These are called uh, forward slashes rather than backslashes. They indicate a comment. So our first block here is what I call a comment header. You'll learn about other headers, so header files and whatnot, but this is a comment header. It's a block of comments that go at the top of your program. Each line has to begin with the double forward slash. That's one way to create a comment. Another way to create a comment is this right here. You start with a forward slash and a star, and then anything between that forward slash and a star and the next star forward slash is a comment. All this is comment. And so what do we mean by comment? That's material that the compiler never will see. One of the parts of the compiling process that I skipped is the preprocessor. The preprocessor will strip out all of the comments before this file goes to the compiler. The compiler never really even sees it. Okay, so what is the purpose of this comment header? The purpose is to communicate with yourself or anybody in the future is going to be reading your code so they know what it is. I have a particular format that I like in all the files that you submit for this uh, course and that is uh, the following. The programmer's name be first, date, name of the file exactly, and then the purpose of the file. What's the purpose of this thing? What, give me a description of what's going on in this file. That way when you come back to this in two years, you read this, you'll know what it is. Or somebody else for that matter. Okay, the next line here, line six, and incidentally, don't be bashful about using blank lines, okay? Lines five and eight are blank lines. Simply to separate one block of text from another, it makes it easier to read. It's very important to make your code easy to read. Okay, what is this? Pound include, and then in brackets, IO stream. That's what's called a system include. Again, the preprocessor, when it reads that, it takes that out and replaces it with the code that's in a system file that's called IOStream. Now, IOStream has code in it, C++ code in it, that gives you the ability to read information from the keyboard and write information out to the screen. In other languages, maybe you have to write that code yourself, but in C++ you don't. And that's one of the powers of C++ is that you can include blocks of code from libraries that you don't have to write. CMath is another library. It has a lot of code in there for calculating mathematical constructs that you wouldn't want to code up. It makes life easy for you. If you don't need it, you don't include it. If you need it, you include it. Well, in most of your programs, you're going to need to read from the keyboard and write out to the screen, and IOStream gives you that capability. So that is going to appear in almost every one of your programs, if not every one. Okay, the next line, using namespace standard. Uh, I'm going to defer an explanation of this until much later in the semester, because it's not really terribly important that you understand fully what's going on there. Very quickly, uh, the compiler works on the resolution of names, and it needs to know where to look for an explanation of a name. 
That is to say, when it sees something like uh, this identifier right here, see out, it has to know where to look to resolve what that means. And when you say using namespace standard, you're telling it to look in the standard namespace and then it can identify what that is. Notice the semicolon here at the end of the uh, statement. It goes here. It does not go after that IO stream. Be sure you get these things exactly right because the compiler is going to look for exactitude, uh, not something close to exact. It has to be exact. Okay. Lines 9 and 10 and incidentally uh, 26 and 27 begin what is called the main function. Every C++ program you're going to write in this course will have a main function. It is the function that is executed first. Now we'll talk about functions later and uh, show how main fits the prescription of what a function is. Uh, for now, just understand that this is the beginning of every program. It's int, main, open and close, parenthesis, a beginning or left-hand curly brace, and a closing curly brace with a return zero. Okay. Here are more comments. Uh, I've used these simply to uh, set apart each of the different parts of the program. So here's my declarations, here's the greeting and inputs, here's computation and output. It just makes it easy to read. What about these lines, 12 and 13? Okay, again, notice that I've used comments here to communicate with a human, maybe myself in, in the future when I want to revisit this program, or somebody else who might want to fix my program. I'm telling them something. I'm saying, hey, this is an output variable, this is an input variable. So what's going on here? These are declarations. You have to declare the variables that you use in your program. What are variables? Variables are modifiable memory locations. What happens when you say float cells? The compiler communicates with the operating system saying, hey operating system, I need four bytes of memory for a floating point value and I'm going to label it with the name cells. The semicolon ends the statement and every declaration is of this form type and name. So the type of the variable is float, the name of the variable is CELC. We'll discuss typing and variable naming conventions in a uh, future lesson. In fact, the next lesson. So I've got two declarations here. Uh, two floats. I could have put this on one line of code. Uh, let me show you how I would do that. I could have written it as float cells comma fair semicolon. All right. So the compiler reads it as I want a variable of uh, type float called cells and one of type float called far. So again, it's type and then name. Type, name. Type, name. Every declaration is like that. Okay, moving along. Here we have C out statements, what we call C out statements. That C O U T is, is read C out. And this is the way you communicate information to the output or to the screen. So it's C out followed by less than, less than. Now in this case, I have what's called a constant literal. Sorry about this line on the screen. I can't get rid of it now, caused by my little finger. Everything in between those double quotes is a constant literal, uh, except for the backslash T, those two backslash Ts. That's just formatting uh, code. I'll talk about uh, that sequence of letters later, the backslash T, that's a tab. What that does is it moves the text over a few spaces so that Welcome to Temperature Conversion Program is not up against the left-hand margin, but it is spaced in a, a few spaces. I can't remember how many spaces it is in the uh, editor that I use. This is going to come out to the screen. The ENDL here 
what that does is it brings the cursor to the beginning of the next line. Okay, so what's happening in this, this whole line of code? And incidentally, this operator is called, the less than less than operator is called the insertion operator. You're inserting something into an output stream. So C out is an output stream. Okay, so what's it doing? It's going to output with two tabs. Welcome to temperature conversion program. And then the ENDL is streamed. Another ENDL is streamed. So the cursor is going to come back to, well, let me show you. It'll be welcome, dot, dot, dot. Then the cursor comes back here. And the second inline brings the cursor back down to there. And this one just disappears, of course. So what it does is, having the two inlines, it's going to put two blank lines uh, between welcome and whatever comes next. And in this case, please enter a temperature in Fahrenheit. That is a prompt. If we go down here to 22, 23, and 24, again, they are output statements. In 22, I am outputting the information that I've calculated. That runs over onto line 23. Incidentally, if you have a constant literal that is too long for one line, then you need to uh, break that by ending the quote and then starting over on the next line. I've kind of done it here. Uh, there's my ending quote. I have a variable stuck in between, but uh, if that was all one line and it was too long to fit in your editor, then you need to close the double quote go to the next line, start the double quote, or you'll get a tremendous compiler error. OK, back to what a prompt is. Line 17. This is a prompt. You're asking the user for some information. So that'll appear at the screen. The next line of code is a CN statement. And this is called the extraction operator. You're extracting information from an input stream. CN is the input stream from the keyboard. That's C-I-N. That's pronounced C-N. So what's happening is whatever somebody enters at the keyboard, let's say they type in 42 and hit the Enter button, then that number 42 is streamed in from the keyboard, from CN, and it's placed in the memory location that you have named FAHR FAR. So it's modifiable memory location. It's going to get its value changed to 42. Line 21 is a calculation. It's an assignment statement. What's on the right-hand side is calculated, and then it is assigned to what's on the left-hand side. It's unfortunate that the equal symbol is used for assignment. I kind of wish that whoever built this compiler would have used maybe that set of symbols, but um, unfortunately they didn't, and they use the equal symbol for assignment. This is not mathematics. This statement makes no sense if you turn it around. The only thing that can go on the left-hand side of the equal sign is a modifiable memory location, and if you turn it around and had 5 divided by 9 times far minus 32, that's not a modifiable memory location. It could not go on the left-hand side. Okay, and notice that each one of these lines of code is end, ended with a semicolon. Moving right along. Again, an output statement, C out statement. Here I'm outputting the information. Uh, I'm echoing what was input, and I'm outputting what has been calculated. And then uh, line 24 here is a sign off. Every program should have a welcome message and a sign-off message. The return zero, closing curly brace, that ends the main function. And that is the basics of a program in C++. That is the end of this session. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about declaring variables, how to name variables, where to declare them, uh, what the different types are.